Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, I'm Vinay from, from the Grab product team. Um, I'm here to talk about a collaboration between Grab and Meta, uh, where our teams jointly worked on the problem space of identifying missing roles in Southeast Asia. So um, our teams use a combination of data sources, uh, AI and technology, conversion technology. Uh, and, I, and I do want to thank um, Estra, Mark and the teams from both our organizations for the opportunity to collaborate and on the excellent work to improve the map. Okay, show of hands. Um, how many of you have been to Southeast Asia? In the minds of most people, this is how it looks. Sandy beaches, <laughs> nice sunny skies, endless paddy fields, etc. right? But it is a complex and a constantly evolving landscape, right? It also looks like this. See the motors, unique transportation modes not seen anywhere else in the world, impenetrable road conditions, traffic, etc. So before we go any further, just want to quickly talk about Grab and why maps are important to us. Right? So Grab is basically Southeast Asia's leading a super app. We provide ride hailing, food delivery, um, financial uh, services in all in all key markets across the region. And Grab is helping make a positive impact to the everyday lives of around 650 million people uh, in that part of the world. We are essentially moving people from or things from point A to point B, and Grab Maps is at the heart of all of this action, right? So as one of the largest geo service users uh, in the region, highly, uh, highly accurate map data is extremely important to our strategy. So better maps equals amazing experiences, right? So from the places that you, that you choose for your rides or your food deliveries, from, the, from like say a distance calculation or a time calculation uh, that powers allocation and pricing, from routes that kind of get passengers and, and drivers to reach their endpoints faster, or even if you want to kind of search for nearby merchants um, and, and like essentials, all of this happens on Grab Maps. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, I'm going to ask you to watch a video that kind of gives you a sense of the problems that Grab Maps tackles. It's audio. Audio. I'm sorry, I'm just going to pause this for a second. So, so, so. Good. Let's try that. It worked in the other room. That's any consolation. It's in. It's not, I don't know if it's plugged in. It should be done HDMI, but it's got a VGA. Sorry. No worries. No worries, right. But then I, th I think there were like a few things that, that might have been quite obvious. The kind of roads that, that we have to kind of navigate through, the kind of experiences that, that we need to help power, right. So all of this essentially um, happens only when you have like complete a road network in place. So road geometry is the bedwork of all of the experiences. And this is why missing roads or geometry changes are extremely uh, important to us. Quite simply put, if we can't reach you, then we can't give you all of this. Okay. So to answer the missing road problem, Grab has been a major contributor to OpenStreetMap over the years. Since 2018, we made a substantial number of edits uh, in the region and we continue to collaborate uh, with local chapters, key community members to constantly uh, enrich the map. Also, every grab ride um, automatically makes makes OSM better. We have multiple pipelines of data flowing in that feed us information on changing ground reality. Um, and we also keep a near out for user feedback that constantly helps us to, to keep improving the map. But mapping missing roads in Southeast Asia is not so straightforward, right? There are like massive, massive issues that, that we have kind of encountered. Uh, first things, roads change. This is like a, 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 this is a rapidly evolving region. And when you look at a satellite imagery, it refreshes, it does not always keep pace with the way that things happen on the ground. Secondly, we wanted to improve the coverage where land have, have like trees or dense buildings. And you can't really make this out when you look at a satellite image. Lastly, as you can see on the right, 
we find roads in unexpected areas which are actually used for transportation. This is a classic and, 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 and like a common occurrence. And we hence need to improve the connectivity by identifying these narrow or small roads that currently are missing on OpenStreetMap. map. So we thus needed a different approach to missing roads, one that leveraged one of the core strengths of Grab, which is our driver network and their probe data. So why is Grab's probe data a, a, a great data source, right? For starters, it gives us a continuous low-cost stream of data across a wide range of geographies and vehicle types. We've essentially leveraged our drivers to kind of tell us where the map is, is like incomplete. Um, and as you might have seen in the video earlier, we operate a wide variety of vehicles, tuk-tuks, motorbikes, in pretty much every nook and cranny of the entire region. So how does this really work, right? Now, we essentially process around 60 TB of data a year. All of the data coming into the pipeline, I must mention, is completely anonymized right up front. Uh, we further clean up, the, clean up this data set uh, to improve our uh, signal-to-noise ratio, uh, thereby improving the quality of what we identify on the ground. So the key slide is how does all of this happen, right? So we have a three-step process. It starts off with aggregation, so we aggregate all of the GPS data at a, at a GeoHash 9 level. Um, and we transfer this using a special kind of process into a heat map, like in the top left picture. The challenge here was to mainly smoothen the, in, the interpretation of major highways, uh, which are the high density points and the, the, the not so used roads, which are the, the low density points, and show both of them on the same heat map. The next step was to run a segmentation model which predicts the confidence level of each pixel being a point on the road. Every, uh, everything above a certain kind of a, a certain a threshold is considered a road, and everything that is not isn't basically right. And that gives us a binary mask. The third third step was to basically skeletonize this. So we transform this binary mask into a graph. Uh, we compare the inferred map segments with what is known to be a part of the OpenStreetMap. And then we can basically understand which which are missing segments. So now we have we have covered how missing roads are identified from GPS data, but the other mainstream source continues to be satellite imagery, and the two sources have their pros and cons, but together they complement each other really well. So at this point, I'm going to ask Esra from Meta to explain how our GPS-based detections can be combined with road inferences from the satellite imagery. How do you start? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ezra from Meta. Uh, I'll continue the presentation by talking about how we merged these two different data sources, grid data and OSM data, and created uh, the final road network. Um, so the data, this process, big data that's given uh, to us from Grab is comes in line string format, um, and uh, what we do is uh, we use a, a line matching based local conflation method uh, to uh, decide how to merge these two data sets. So basically, we look at each curvilinear line structure and decide on. Uh, whether to conflate wholly the, the full line or uh, partially based on uh, its local neighborhood. Um, and um, this data is then uh, converted into a format uh, that is uh, consistent with OSM's ways and nodes format, uh, which creates the OSM change sets finally. Uh, so, um, one, one important step here is we also have uh, been able to like render these uh, results so that we, uh, our QA team can, you know, take a look and, you know, uh, point out any problems, uh, any major problems with the conflation process. Um, as a post-processing step, uh, we have one more step here. Uh, which is about dropping down uh, the ferry routes, uh, the roads that are uh, overlapping with the water bodies or the, the roads that are uh, overlapping with some existing buildings. Um, so I think uh, we were uh, talking with Vinay, actually these routes you are seeing on the water bodies are intentional because, I mean, Grab basically um, uh, makes uh, these, the, the planning of the ride by minimizing the route, like, you know, through that water. Uh, but uh, for, for the purpose of uh, giving this back uh, to, the, uh, to the OSM, of course, like, you know, we needed to clean that up. 
um, uh, to um, give some visual results, how the final results looked. Um, so the major strength of the method was it complemented satellite imagery pretty well. Uh, it created, um, you know, new roads that wouldn't be uh, that we wouldn't be uh, able to see from satellite imagery, especially in areas occluded with trees or uh, dense buildings. Um, the second advantage we observed during experimentation uh, was uh, the GPS data was easily uh, was easy on picking up changes that's going on even before, like you know, you refresh your satellite imagery. Um, the other thing, when you were looking at these results in different tiles, you would be able to see the amount of misalignment uh, between the GREB uh, data and also the OSM data, because uh, with OSM everything is de delineated over images, so you would be easily understand like you know what's going on with respect to that misalignment as well. Uh, although, like in the final results, you know, uh, we didn't do any um, we didn't do any alignment uh, when we are pushing these into daylight. But this was also another direction that we would uh, saw uh, potential use of this data. Um, we had a few challenges uh, with with the coming data as well. One of them was noise. Sometimes the drivers took some shortcuts, which created some noisy, you know, uh, roads uh, around some areas. Or GPS signals might be noisy. Although, like you know, ML algorithms are doing, uh, you know, their best, like you know, to clean up most of the noise that's coming from there. Um, or it might also, um, you know, fail to detect some of the new roads that's coming in because of the low traffic as well. Uh, this is also, you know, goes back to our uh, discussion around anonymization. We only took uh, the tracks that are over a certain, uh, that are over a certain threshold. Uh, so that leads us to miss some of the roads at the end. Um, to give you a big picture, um, as a result, uh, we um, conflated uh, GPS uh, grab road data from 62 Southeast Asian cities. And from these cities, we were able to detect 24,000 uh, kilometers uh, of new roads uh, into OSM. Um, and uh, when we look at per city improvements, um, it took us almost like, you know, in some cities to 20%. On average, we saw 14% uh, improvement uh, in the new roads that are being detected. Um, also, uh, we, uh, we are providing these results back to the community in our daylight re release uh, at, at a regular, regular cadence. Um, uh, so uh, feel free to uh, check, it, uh, check it out uh, from our daylight website, uh, how this can be uh, used for the community. And uh, lastly, we are, uh, really, um, uh, we are really happy to see that this is one of the first data sets in daylight, first road data sets that's coming from ML, but it's a non-image based uh, ML model. Thank you.